How's it going, everybody? Um, so for this video, the third video, I'm going to be talking about a couple things. Uh, first thing I'm going to be talking about is in open circuit, uh, and I'll talk about all the things that that kind of implies for your circuit analysis, uh, troubleshooting, all that kind of stuff. Then I'll talk about a short circuit um, and similar ideas for that, as well as fuses, how they work, um, and why they're useful. And then if I remember too, I'll talk about uh, series and parallel resistance calculations. So to do all this, I'm going to use LT Spice, uh, just because it's fast and easy and it's kind of a visual way to learn. So I drew this simple circuit, uh, just a 5 volt voltage source, and I drew these two lines coming out of it. So all these lines mean is that um, this isn't really connected to anything, I don't have a resistor in there. So if I want to place one in, I could. Um, so I'll do that, and I'll give it a value. And I'll go ahead and click Simulate. Notice I'm running the dot OP analysis, so the operating point. So when I click run, I get all the values. Um, notice the voltage of this node 1 is 5 volts, which is good. That's what we expect from the voltage source. But the important thing here is we don't get any current either through our voltage source here or through our resistor here. And the reason for that is because in an open circuit, you don't have a component connected. So it's a disconnected component. And in order for current to flow, you know that you need a closed loop. So since this is not a closed loop, you will not have any current flowing. And that's typical of any open circuit. Uh, any component that is not connected uh, in a loop will not conduct any current. So that's a very important thing to know, so I'll go ahead and write that down. For open circuit, uh, I equals zero, and V can be, voltage can be anything. What I mean by that is that the voltage really, um, since it's just a potential, it will still appear, so you will still have voltage in an open circuit. Uh, in fact, you'll have the same voltage as your voltage source in this case, um, and but you won't have any current flowing. So since this is not a closed loop, you won't have any current. So that's the idea with an open circuit. Um, now there's other, some other important things about an open is it's not true that you won't have any current flowing. It's possible that you can have an open where um, just one component's disconnected and you can still have current. So let's do an example of that. So I'll go ahead and delete this. Uh, let's see. Put in a couple of resistors. I'll put in a resistor here, resistor here, resistor here. Um, and then I'll go ahead and connect these up. So R1 and R2 are going to be in series, and R3 is going to be in parallel with R1 and R2. But what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to make R3 an open. So I'll draw lines uh, in that direction, but I won't actually connect them to R3. So I'll give these a value, I don't know, 1 kilo ohm, 1 kilo ohm, 5 kilo ohm, for example. When I click Run, so now we see we got 5 volts at this top node. Uh, since these two resistors are the same, 1K and 1K, this node in the middle is going to have 2.5 volts, and we see that right here. But then notice that the current through R3 is zero, and that's what we expect because since the voltage source, or excuse me, since it's an open circuit over here, we don't get any current. However, since R1 and R2 still do form a loop with the voltage source, you can see that we do still get current flowing in this loop right here. So it is possible for you to have an open circuit and for you to have um, current flowing at the same time. It just won't flow through the component that's not connected. So that's pretty much the idea with an open circuit. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to talk about? Okay, so I think that's about it uh, for an open circuit. Oh, I guess I could talk about real briefly effect on parallel and series. Um, so here I kind of have a complicated network, I guess you could say. Um, I have a set of series resistors and I also have a parallel uh, branch here. So let's go ahead and remove this and just do a series branch. So if I just do this and I open up R1, and now I do the simulate and run. You'll notice that R1, or there's an open circuit around R1, so R1 is not connected on either end. So, like we expect, we get no current flowing through anything because this is the only branch that current could flow through, and since there's an open in that branch, you can't have any current flowing. So in a series connection with an open circuit, you will not have any current flowing, and that's true of any simple series connection. So now, if we do a parallel network, Go ahead and delete that, and place a couple more resistors here. So if we do this, and bring this line down, um, so if you can think about this, we're going to be doing similar to what we did in that first circuit, uh, where we had a couple of components connected and some not connected. So I'm just going to disconnect R2 in this case. So notice that R, or excuse me, R1. So R1 is now an open, and I'll give these all increasing values. Um, and now if I click Simulate Run, this, 
and notice now we do have current flowing through R1 and we do have current flowing through R2. Or excuse me, we have current flowing through R2 and current flowing through R3, but no current flowing through R1. And we look up here, you can see that. Um, and that's what we expect since the uh, R1 is open. Uh, it's not connected in any loop. It's not going to conduct any current. However, the power supply itself still does conduct current. So just be aware that in a parallel connection, you can still have current flowing if you have more than one component. But in a series connection, that's not the case. Um, so I guess what I put in here is a little misleading. Um, I equals zero for series circuit. I'll add that in parentheses. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, open circuits, and we'll learn more about those in lab. Uh, so now let's move on to short circuits. Um, short circuits can be a little tricky in SPICE, I think. I haven't actually done one. Um, but because for a short circuit you're actually preventing, or you're actually adding a path directly from the top of the voltage source to the uh, bottom, or from the top to ground, uh, I don't know what SPICE is actually going to do with that. So let's go ahead and just do a short. So the simplest short you could have is you could connect your power supply up and you could just loop it back to ground. Now let me be clear, do not ever do this to your power supply. This is a very dangerous circuit, especially if you have a power supply or a battery that doesn't have a li current limit on it. Um, remember the resistance you calculated in a wire is 0.2 ohms or so. So if I click run, I think SPICE will give me an error, and it does. Um, doesn't really know what to do with this circuit, um, but let's say, for example, you did have a non-ideal wire and your resistance was in the order of 0 0.2 ohms. So, as you know, it's a very low resistance, so let's go ahead and hook this up. And just to be clear, I'll name label as R wire. So this is effectively a short. This is more like a, uh, a realistic short, if you will, since this wire does have some resistance to it. So if I click Run, um, you can see I get that voltage, and I also get a current flowing. And notice this 25. This is in amps, and 25 amps is a whole heck of a lot of current. And you can do a lot of damage to yourself, to your circuit, to the power supply, to a lot of things with 25 amps flowing. So this would be a very dangerous circuit. Do not ever connect your power supply up in this way. Um, so that's the idea with a short, is basically that you are just giving a direct connection to ground, or in this case around a component. Um, and it's a very dangerous thing to do. So you want to be really careful of shorts in your circuit. Typically, you can do a lot of damage with a short. Uh, opens, you probably can't do as much damage with. So opens are a little safer, but both are issues with uh, circuitry, especially when you're working with like PCB boards in IME 156, you might notice you have issues. So now let's go ahead and hook up a slightly more complicated circuit. Um, in this case, this is the series or the effect of a short on a series resistance. So if I give these, I'm going to make it easy, 2.5K, 2.5K, so I know this is going to conduct 1 milliamp of current. So if I click Run, notice that everything's connected up. There's no opens or shorts, so I just get 1 milliamp flowing through this branch. So that's good. So if I close that, now I'm going to short out a component. And what that means is I'm going to connect a wire around it. So what this is doing in terms of circuit analysis perspective is that current's going to come up through here and it's going to sit at this branch. It's going to say, hmm, I could go down through a 2.5 kilo ohm resistor or I could go this way where there's effectively zero resistance or if you have a non-ideal wire, a very, very small resistance. So the idea here is that all the current that comes up through here is essentially going to bypass this resistor and it's going to flow through here. So if it does that, this actually, it's almost like this resistor isn't here. But we'll run this real quick. So now... So now you see it actually doesn't even include R2 in the picture. Uh, it just says the current through R1. And so the reason for that is that since it sees this short around it, it says, well, R2 is not really doing anything, so we can just exclude it from the uh, data table here. So similarly, if I just delete R2 at this point, I can do the same simulation and run. And you see I get the exact same values. And that's just because, like I said, all the current that flows through out of the power supply is going to just go right around R2 and come through R1. So if you have multiple components in a series network and you short one, uh, that would be the effect. Essentially, no current is going to run through here. It's going to be like this uh, component not, doesn't exist. So now let's talk about short circuit in a parallel combination. Uh, so if I go ahead here and connect up a couple other resistors, I'm going to... Um, so this would be the effect of a short circuit in a parallel combination. 
So, once I'm done with this, uh, let's give these some values, and I'll click run. Remember, this is a circuit that's connected properly, so I get some amount of current flowing through all the different components, and that's good. Uh, so now I'm going to short a component. Uh, let's say, doesn't really matter, I guess. And essentially, now this is kind of interesting. So a short and a parallel combination like this isn't just going to affect the R3, which is the component I was trying to short. It's actually going to short them all, because if you remember in a parallel combination, everything's connected to the same two nodes. So if I short R3, I'm also shorting R2, and I'm also shorting R1. So if I run this, it's going to be like that first circuit that I drew with just a wire all the way around. And it's probably going to give me an error, or I expect it to give me an error. And in fact, it does. Um, it says a circuit does not contain a node other than ground. And what it means is that it's just connected all the way in one loop with one wire. So it doesn't know what to do with that. So again, this would be a very dangerous circuit. Uh, if I want to do like an actual, you know, non-ideal case, I could do the same thing I did before where I put in a resistor with the value of uh, 0.2 ohms. And remember that this is the resistance roughly of one of your banana to banana cables or, cables or your wires. So if I click simulate run, now I get some small amount of current through R1, R2, and R3 because it isn't really a short anymore, so there is going to be some trickle of current. But if you look at the current conducted through our wire, and more, perhaps more importantly, the current through, conducted through the power supply, it's again 25 amps. And like I said, that's a huge amount of current, very dangerous, can damage a lot of things, uh, most importantly you, but also any of the equipment you're working with. Um, so you want to be really careful about shorts uh, in general, and especially in a parallel combination like this, because it can have a really bad effect on your circuit. Um, so now, I think the one next thing I want to talk about is fuses. Uh, yep. So what a fuse does is a fuse is just a long wire, uh, or a piece of wire that burns out at a certain, a certain current. So I'm not really sure how to do fuses in SPICE, but let's say, for example, you had a uh, 5 ohm resistor and yeah okay so 1 amp so 5 volts 5 ohms 1 amp so if you had a fuse in here and let's say you set that fuse to I don't know 2 amps since there's only 1 amp flowing through this circuit it would be fine the fuse would not blow it would continue to conduct current and everything would be fine now for some reason this oh, this is a wire wire we'll call this our 1 right now um, for some reason this resistance changed and it went down to 2 ohms that's a really small resistance, but just for the sake of argument, I click run. Now I'm conducting two and a half amps, and that's actually enough to blow the fuse. So the fuse is just a really well-defined um, wire that burns out at a very specific current. So at this two and a half amps, that would be enough to blow my fuse. So my fuse would blow, my fuse is up here, and it would create an open circuit. So that's what happens when a fuse blows, is it creates that open. And we know the effect of an open is that it doesn't let any current be, be conducted. So if I click run, now I get zero current. And so the idea of a fuse is it prevents short circuits, which is a good thing because now that you have an open cir circuit, you can't really do a whole lot of damage if you don't have current flowing. Uh, we haven't learned about power yet, but power is just voltage times current. And power is a thing that can do a lot of damage. So um, that's pretty much the idea behind a fuse. Uh, let's see here. So the next thing I want to talk about is series and resistance calculations. Um, you pretty much know about that, so I'll just go over it real briefly. Um, remember that for a series network, you just add the resistors up. So if you know, I set up three resistors like this, and I connect them all up. And this is going to look kind of messy, but that's pretty much the way it is. Um, I'll set them all incrementing values, and you click run. So this is, you know, conducting, uh, I don't know how many, 0.8 milliamps of current, roughly. Um, so there's three resistors here, and this isn't really necessarily a... Uh, there's really no point in doing that. You just have two extra components. So I could just make one resistor of 6 kilo ohms, 3, 2, and 1. And if I click Run, I'll get the exact same amount of current. So that's the idea behind series resistors. Um, series resistance is pretty easy. Now, parallel resistance is a little more complicated. So if I do a parallel combination, I can do these guys. Um, so the way I like to do parallel combinations of resistors is actually to break them down into two different uh, sets. So um, I'm going to do the same thing I did here, and I'm going to have this be 1K, R2B, 2K, R3B, 3K, and that's pretty much it. 